रेडियो खांची 90.4 पॉइंट एफएम पर प्रसारित किए जाने वाले विषय वस्तु का सारा क्रेडिट प्रस्तुत करता को दिया जाता है हमारा मकसद है समाज में ज्ञान एवं सकारात्मकता को आगे बढ़ाना डियर स्टूडेंट्स थ्रू रेडियो खांची 90.4 पॉइंट एफएम हम सब का रेडियो दिस इज डॉक्टर समीरा सिन्हा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर जगन्नाथ नगर कॉलेज रांची यूनिवर्सिटी आई विल एलेबोरेट एंड एनालाइज टूडे Samuel Taylor Coleridge's poem Kubla Khan prescribed in semester 4 of English Honors core course paper 9 unit 3 Part 1 of this two part lecture deals with information about aspects of the circumstances under which the poem was written a reading of the poem and a brief overview Born in 1772 Coleridge was gifted with one of the most fertile and versatile imagination in English poetry. Although his poetic output is relatively limited, it contains many masterpieces such as The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, Kubla Khan, Frost at Midnight, and Christabel. As a literary theorist and critic, he is still enormously influential today through his contribution to the lyrical ballads and biographia literaria specifically his theory of imagination kubla khan happens to be the grandson of chinggis khan founder of the great mongol dynasty in china in the 13th century coleridge was introduced to him through samuel perkis's and a book entitled perkis his pilgrimage which was published in 16 13 in that he was reading a passage in which it was written in zamdu did kublai khan build a stately palace encompassing 16 miles of plain ground with a wall wherein are fertile meadows pleasant springs delightful streams and all sorts of beasts of chase and game in the midst thereof a sumptuous house of pleasure which may be removed from place to place This description provides a basis for the elaborate imaginative vision of Kubla Khan's pleasure dome in Coleridge's poem which was written in 1797-98 but was not published until 1816. Let us give this poem a reading. Kubla Khan with a subtitle or a vision in a dream a fragment. In Zanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree where alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree and here were forests ancient as the hills and folding sunny spots of greenery but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething as if this earth in fast thick bands were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced amid whose swift haft intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or shafi grain beneath the thresher's flail and with these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river five miles meandering with the mazy motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and mid this tumult kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war the shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice 
A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song, to such a deep delight twould win me, that with music loud and long I would build that dome in air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, Beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honeydew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. The three prisms through which the poem Kubla Khan may be viewed on the layers underlying it are first, remembrance, second, poetic experience, third, insight into the mysterious, the mystery on the surface of which we live is described as the sign-sharectrix of the rational mind, which is totally silent. The energy creates its own form, that is, a willing suspension of disbelief. And fourth, a psychological curiosity. Kubla Khan may be described as a poem of self-recognition, in which the figure of the youth, as line of the poem, is finally identified with the speaking voice in the poem. For he on honeydew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. In strophe one, Coleridge describes the palace built by Kubla Khan. In Zanadu did, in Zanadu did Kubla Khan a sunny pleasure dome decree. The vision itself is said to have been inspired by the perusal of the travel book Perkus his pilgrimage, which Coleridge had been reading. The first trophy builds up the theme and verbal pattern of the material here and there, and the antithetics or dual vision of civilization built over chaos. There is a dome, a convex structure, representing order, civilization, and limitation on the one hand, and on the other, is the cavern, which is concave, representing the unlimited, the primitive, caverns measureless to man, as is written in line 27, where the sunless sea may be compared to the watery shores, as William Blake's Earth's Answer in his poem Earth's Answer, Earth sits in darkness, connecting these two antithetical worlds the material consisting of rocks in Kubla Khan, mountains tossed like shaft, forests ancient on the one hand, and water or flux, the ocean, the river, the fountain on the other, is the sacred river Alf. Alf has several layers of connotations. First, this name is taken from Alphens, who in classical mythology is a river god who loved and pursued Arethusa Ar until Diana changed her into a stream. Their waters, it is said, united in a fountain in Sicily. Second, it could belong to Aleph, the Kabbalistic tree from which divine power flows. Third, it reminds us of Alif, the first alphabet of the Muslim mysticism. And fourth, According to Pythagoras, it is the punctum from which all manifestation flows from the unmanifest. Pythagoras believed in metempsychosis, or the eternal recurrence of things. Kubla Khan and Zanadu are the given elements in the poem that need to be accepted without asking why. Kubla has the power to command magnificence, and that is enough. He builds a dome of pleasure for himself, just as the rulers of Byzantium in W. B. Yeats's poem Sailing to Byzantium built a great, greater dome to honor God. Kubla, however, builds the dome only for his own pleasure. What follows is a description of the visual beauties of the land, twice five miles of fertile ground, beneath the dome its gardens bright with sinuous rills, 
blossoming of incense-bearing trees, ancient forests, and sunny spots of greenery. But what is significant is that the sacred river that ran through the caverns measureless to man and went down to a sunless sea echoes again in Strophe II, which describes an elemental world of chaos that exists right outside the structured or civilized world of order decreed under the dome. We shall deal with this in the second part of my lecture.